Thank you, Elaine, who's been a wonderful um, chair of the Legal Momentum Board. It's been a pleasure to work with her. So next, continuing our award presentations, I'd like to ask uh, Linda Zukakis to join me at the podium. Uh, Linda is the Executive Vice President and Corporate Controller at American Express and also one of our 2014 Aiming High honorees. Linda. Good afternoon, everyone. When I was invited to introduce Linda Zecker, I was instantly excited. I have to admit that the draw at first was fairly superficial. It just seemed so fitting for me to introduce another Linda Z. As I learned more about Linda and eventually matter, I realized that it was truly a privilege to be able to meet her and so many other accomplished women. I would be remiss in not thanking the Legal Momentum Organization for bringing the award recipients together and for bringing us all together. It's truly an honor to be associated with so many impressive and inspirational women. Now back to Linda. Linda started her career as a geophysicist in Texas, then went on to work in product management at Bank of America, sales and marketing at PeopleSoft and Oracle, and held senior leader roles at Evolve and Microsoft. And impressively, she took some time off to spend with her family during the course of her career. Today, Linda runs a 180 plus year old global learning company, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Linda is known as a risk taker, a strategic thinker. She also has transformed businesses and drives results. Linda also happens to be a very personable woman. Linda's approach to challenges is, how hard can that be? If something looks interesting to her, then she dives in. This was Linda's frame of reference in 2011 when she was approached to be the president and CEO of HMH as it was going through a period of transformation and financial challenges. Linda was thinking about retiring but when approached about the opportunity, she followed her passion for reading and reflected on the opportunity and decided she couldn't pass up such an opportunity to transform a company steeped in heritage so aligned with her personal passions and her professional skills. CEO of a 180-year-old-plus company with 1.6 billion in sales, with over 50 million customers in over 150 countries. How hard could that be? Doesn't sound much like selling off into retirement, I have to say. Since Linda joined HMH, she's led the company through a voluntary bankruptcy, eliminating $3 billion in debt, and subsequently took the company public in 2013. Linda doesn't rest on her laurels, she says, she says, it's not what you've done in the past that matters, it's what you're doing right now. And I can't think of anything better for us to do right now than to hear more of Linda's story. So please join me in welcoming Linda Zecker to the stage. So I also thought it was wonderful to be able to meet another Linda Z. And I really like the fact that she's behind me in the alphabet. That's even better. <laughs> so thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you very much, Legal Momentum. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Bill Bears, who is one of the co-chairs, and my entire team from Hope Mifflin Harcourt. I'm very privileged to have the honor to work with all of you. And it's also such an honor to be here amongst so many you know, inspiring women and to receive this award today. There's something really special about the philosophy behind this honor. I love that it highlights the power of potential, the importance of striving to fulfill that potential, and taking a few risks in the process. You know, that's really the essence of Aiming High. So thinking about what I could possibly talk about, you know, I thought about my grandmother and the lessons that I learned from her. 
Now, I was very close to my grandmother. In fact, I practically lived with her while I was growing up. She had an eighth grade education. She was a true Rosie the Riveter during the war. And she was a political animal that worked every year for her candidates and then tirelessly at the polls. She was also a dedicated gardener, fantastic cook, played a mean game of hearts, but she absolutely loved horse racing. She was what I'd really call a well-rounded woman. She was a risk taker who knew her own mind, cut her own path, but above and beyond, she loved her family and she loved me. When I was, you know, as I thought about her life, when the war was over, it was very interesting because she left the factory to go back to home for a short period of time and then decided that she really wanted to work. And so she ended up staying in the steel mill. It was a rolling mill in Middletown, Ohio, where she organized the first union in the steel mill. And she was the only woman to work in that steel mill and stay with all the men. So that was pretty impressive. So when I look at my career, I see a lot of my grandmother in me, but I also see a lot of my mother. She was a very gentle housewife on the outside, but on the inside and when needed, boy, she was made of steel and she could hold her own with anybody. So having the influence of my mother and my grandmother in life, I think has been a real privilege. When I graduated from college with a degree in earth science, I followed my husband to Midland, Texas, where I took a job as a geophysicist with Texas Instruments. You know, I, that was obviously met with a lot of challenges, including the fact that there were very few professional women in that role. In fact, to my knowledge, I was the first woman at Texas Instruments to become pregnant. So therefore, I left on a four-month short-term disability because they did not have a pregnancy policy. You can imagine they put one in pretty quickly after I left. So my career has evolved a lot since those days, but along the way, I've collected many crucial lesson lessons, both professionally and personally in my growth. First and foremost is chart your own course and don't be afraid to take risks. That's been the philosophy of my career and has obviously led me to quite an adventurous path. When Houghton Mifflin began recruiting me from Microsoft to join this 180-year-old company that had been the home of Thoreau and Longfellow and Virginia Woolf and Hawthorne, I have to admit I was a little bit intimidated. But I did remind myself that I had run a $10 billion business at Microsoft, so how hard could it be? <laughs> Well, since taking over as CEO three and a half years ago, as Linda said, I mean, there, this has been a pace that never slowed, and the challenges and the opportunities have been many. But I did not fully appreciate the undertaking I was, you know, I was going to have, truly did not appreciate it. But what I did know is that I had the capabilities and I knew I could figure this out. If I had worried too much about what it meant to be the only woman in the lab or on the sales team or in the boardroom, or conversely, if I had been too scared to take the time that I needed to reconnect with my family, I may have limited my potential. But even more upsetting, I may have allowed others to define that potential. But I drew a lot of strength from the idea and the simple truth that while my career is and will always be an important part of who I am, it's not the whole of me. I've been blessed in my career, and in my quest for success, though, I almost lost touch with my family. After significant travel around the world and absences from home, I mundanely one day was doing the laundry. And at that point, my young son said, Mom, we don't do it that way. <laughs> I laugh now. I didn't laugh then. I, I sat down on the floor, and I literally fell apart and started crying. And I thought to myself, wow, I'm not part of the we. So that night, I told my husband that I was going to leave my job and I wanted to move to the East Coast to be closer to our extended family. Fortunately, I have a blessing in my husband because he agreed. So three years later, as my son was getting older and he was getting a little bit tired of his mom volunteering for everything in the school, driving every carpool, following him everywhere, he finally said, Mom, I think you need a full-time job. <laughs> so we laugh about it now at his age 36, but he still tells people today that I left my job because of him. And you know, that doesn't get any better than that. So that's, that just makes my, it, it makes everything worth it. So I'm grateful for the opportunities and experiences that I've been fortunate enough to receive. I know all women don't have that opportunity and that ability to walk away and then come back. But I do know that all women deserve to have that opportunity. 
My wish is that all women feel empowered to take risks and pursue their truest selves. And this is something we can all have as part of us every day. I'm a CEO, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, and I'm a damn good girlfriend. And so <laughs> none of those are mutually exclusive, but all of those are me. So I encourage women every day to support one another wholeheartedly, to lead by example, and to be champions of one another. Mentoring doesn't need to be formal or structured. No matter our stage in our career or our life, with each valuable insight and experience that we gain, we need to share those. Because sharing our stories with one another, we can offer new perspectives to what others are facing, help them with their challenges, and help them grow long term. We should also all celebrate our successes. And I know from this fabulous group of women that are in this room, we're going to have a lot of successes in the future. So thank you very much for the honor.